our subject is true Christian character. Finally, says the Apostle Paul in verse 8, finally, brethren, literally in the Greek, something like the rest, or as for the rest. But some people have translated it based on the use of this term in classical literature along these lines, henceforth. So it could be that that is the meaning of the term finally. Our translators have chosen finally. That's the majority translation, but it could mean henceforth. This is how you must live. Henceforth in summary. Finally, brethren, he's speaking to believers. He's speaking to us. Whatsoever things, whatsoever things, you can't pick and choose in the Christian life. You can't pick some things that are true and not other things. Whatever is true, whatever is honest. You can't be good in church and bad at home, say, and unkind to your wife or to your husband. You can't pick one area of the Christian life to live truly and sincerely and earnestly and not another. So there are the repeated whatsoevers or whatever to challenge us. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Now this eighth verse sums up and bases an exhortation on these words because it sums up everything that's gone before in the epistle. It relates to chapter two, for example, and verse five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The word mind is used. Think on these things. Let this mind be in you, that was also in Christ Jesus. Verse nine of chapter four. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. Then the God of peace shall be with you. The example of the apostle is represented in verse 8. So we come to the 8th verse. And there are six whatsoevers and two ennies, which probably qualify the final whatsoever. So we'll look at the six whatsoever things. Whatsoever things, keep them in mind. Think on these things. Literally put your mind on each of these six things. This is the basis of Christian character. This is the Christian life and how we're to live. This is your mission statement, as it were, as an individual. How would you describe your policy for life as a believer in these words, says the apostle. Set your mind on these glorious things. Whatsoever things are true, what does he mean by that? Keep all true things in mind. This is your goal, your plan for life. Whatsoever things are true. Now the word true, obviously it embraces truthfulness, honesty. It eliminates things like gossip and dishonest things and slurs. But the sense is broader. The way the word True is used in the scripture tells us, as deceivers and yet true, says the apostle in 2 Corinthians and chapter 6. And he means genuine, not just truthful, but genuine, correct. We're not deceivers, but we're genuine. And we say things that are true, but we represent truth. It was said by the Lord of John the Baptist, his testimony is true, reliable, trustworthy. True is a very broad term. Put your mind on whatsoever things are honest. I am the true vine, says the Lord, the genuine vine. Whatsoever things are true. So we have in mind things that are right, things that are genuine, things that are correct, things that are real. What is reality? What is real? Only biblical truth is real. 
Only the Lord is real. Only the worldview that puts God at the heart of it is real. Set your mind and all your thinking on reality, spiritual realities, things that are genuine, things that are reliable, things that are honest, yes, but the truth, it embraces all that. Here's the first instruction. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, spiritual reality, genuine, trustworthy, reliable, you can see what he's saying when you understand the broad use in scripture of the word true. Be devoted to these things. Be devoted first and foremost to the gospel that has saved you and brought you to God. Be devoted and loyal to and make all your plans and your schemes around your walk with the Lord and your service for him. The doctrines of the faith, whatsoever things are true, be loyal to them all. Be a defender of them all. Put your mind upon them all. Understand them all. Search them all. Be for them. Be concerned about them. Be protective of them. Set your mind on, put your mind on all those things that are true. Be a defender of the doctrines and the standards and the ways that Christ has set out in his word. Be a proclaimer of them. That's what it embraces. Finally, brethren, at summing up the epistle, whatsoever things are true, spiritual reality at the head of the procession, reliable, trustworthy, given from God and right and genuine, you are a proclaimer of and a defender of, first and foremost, those things. That's your life as a Christian. The gospel, the doctrines, the laws, the standards, the service, the worship. That's what it's all about. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. It's another way of putting it. Whatsoever things are true from God. This is about our spiritual lives. What kind of a person am I? We ask. The greatest problem in the Lord's churches today is people who do not put their minds on the things that are true, that they know are true, that God has shown them the things that have saved them, the things concerning the faith and the gospel and Christ and his service and the doctrines and the practices that God has laid upon us. And they don't keep their minds on these things or value them. They're not concerned about them all. They become pliable people. Yes, even saved people become pliable people, spiritually casual people people who are at ease, people who think more about earthly things and earthly responsibilities, important as they may be, people who set them first and work and career and wealth and possessions and enjoyments and pleasures and family and many of those things are of crucial importance. But they come first and they fill our horizons and we become indifferent and ambivalent about things that are true, spiritual realities, and careless people develop in such a way they have no spiritual backbone, and they have no great commitment and no resolution to defend and promote the things of God. They become, for, forgive the term, floppy people. That's the biggest trouble in the churches today. That's what gives rise to decline. That's what gives Satan his success so that he can bring about decadence and collapse and wrong things and worldliness in the church and pleasure and entertainment instead of worship and all this type of thing and then ultimately false doctrines. It's because people who should know better, who are believers, are pliable and indefinite and floppy and unconcerned 
and untroubled and they have no focus and they have no loyalty and no dedication to whatsoever things are true. The spiritual realities, the laws and the standards of God. And I could give you endless examples. I think of some years ago, I knew a doctor and he was an earnest Christian, a very nice man, and he said to me, uh, one day, he said, there's some very disturbing things going on in my church. The church is going happy clappy. He said, and uh, sadly, my young teenagers, they love it. And uh, everybody's going for it. I'm very uncomfortable with it. I'm not used to it, he said. I'm used to a different way of doing things. I said, well, what do you think about it? How are you reacting to it? He said, well, he said, actually, I don't mind too much. I personally don't like it, but, you know, I'm ambivalent about what happens in the church. Ambivalent? Whatsoever things are true. If God has said things should be like this, and they become like that, you and I are deeply concerned about it. Whatsoever things are true, have your mind on these things. They're at the heart of your concerns. You'll defend them as much as you possibly can. You'll promote them and stand for them. You will not become a floppy person, an ambivalent person, an indifferent person, an unconcerned person. Because the moment you become like that, the devil has got you. What a tragedy. He can't take your salvation. You're still born again. You love the Lord. You'll go to heaven. But how will your life count for him? While you're here, what gratitude will you show for him? While you're here, you didn't defend his truth. You didn't set your heart and mind upon the things that are true. Primarily the spiritual things, the most important things. That's what the Apostle Paul is encompassing. And you lost your backbone and your commitment and you became indifferent. What a terrible thing it would be. I know a church, and they called a pastor who was really quite liberal. And it was a Bible-believing church. And there was a lady spoke to me, and she was somewhat concerned about this. I said to her, well, did you vote for it? She said, well, I did, actually. I was astonished. And uh, I don't know what made me ask the question. And she said, I rather like him. He's a very nice man. Where was her mind? She wasn't thinking on the things that were true, the doctrines that saved her, that should have meant everything to her. The Lord who came to spill his blood and suffer and die for her. She wasn't holding on to and putting in prime place the things that are true. So I hope none of us become like that. Why do churches reject reverence? the rules of God, the ways of God. Why do they let in the world? Because too many people have become pliable, floppy, insensitive, careless. I don't particularly like it, but I'm not going to put up a fuss. I'm not going to say anything about it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Think on these things. Set your mind on them. The devil can only succeed if the people of God become convictionless and pliable and floppy. And that's a terrible thing. May I put it this way, dear friends? If you're a young lady and you know a young man and you're very drawn to him and he's handsome and he's intelligent and he's strong, and he's got a good sense of humor. He's a nice fellow and he means well. But he's got no spiritual backbone and he's floppy and he's indifferent. And he could go at the drop of a hat to some happy clappy place and it wouldn't make a lot of difference to him because he doesn't set his mind on things that are true. Don't let your emotions run away with you. You don't want him. He's not for you. Don't marry him. He's pliable, he's weak, he's floppy, he's uncommitted. His mind is not on serious things. They don't matter enough. He may be saved, but what a tragedy. It'd be a tragedy if you ever marry him. Same with a young man. There's a young woman, and you're somewhat drawn, 
and she's beautiful and she's intelligent and she's capable, but her mind is on the little things of life, the lesser things. It's not on the things that are true. She's born again, but she won't defend them. They don't matter that much. She's not grieved about the things that are happening in these days of terrible decline. She doesn't think like that. Leave her alone, dear friend. Leave her alone. I'm sorry to put it like that. A person for whom the things of God and the truth are not particularly important. Things, controversies don't matter. They could go anywhere. Though they may be true believers, they don't want to make a fuss. They don't want to be involved. You don't want somebody like that. Our prayer to God is, O oh Lord, deepen me. Keep me from ever being like that. Our prayer is, let me see the truth. Let me see my duty. Let me hold on to and honor the things that are important, no matter what. Let me see in my mind's eye my Savior, who suffered and died for me, who set his love upon me, and honor him and love him and put him first and live for him and for his standards and for his truth and the proclamation of the word. Keep me like that, Lord, is our plea. Make me concerned. May the gospel be safe with me. May I never let my church slide into anything which is against the word and the standards of the Lord. Lord, keep me and help me. Make spiritual realities my life and my mission. I'll defend them. I'll proclaim them. That's the standard, dear friends, for believers. And that's what the Apostle Paul means when he says, whatsoever things are true, think on these things, or set your mind on these things. Lord, make me a person of conviction and resolution and concern and loyalty and commitment and defense. Keep me in that place. That's the prayer of every one of us. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, honest, what is meant by this? Well, actually, the Greek means honorable, noble. Our translators have chosen the word honest because all those years ago, in the days of the King James translation, one of the meanings of the word honest was honorable, true, respectable, without hypocrisy. So in a sense, it would be fair to slightly update this to whatsoever things are honorable. Pure, pure is mentioned later on. Pure in the sense of being without hypocrisy. Consistent, you might say. Whatsoever things are consistent with the things that are true, that have just been mentioned. Honest, through and through, a consistent person. That's the sense of what is meant here. Noble. Put your mind on worthy things. I must talk about this because even among genuine Christians, things are going to pieces as far as this consistent life is concerned. Put your mind to worthy and consistent things. Be concerned about the way things are carried out, the way things are done, the way you speak, the way you write. Be through and through a consistent person, never shoddy, never fleshly, never pandering to the world, never trivial, never banal. You have the misfortune of seeing what some people put on their Twitter pages, some Christians. It's so trivial. It's so compromised. It's so worldly. One minute they're speaking as Christians, the next minute they're trying as hard as they can to be worldlings, even using the lowest kind of slang and cheapskate language. Well, that's totally against this. Whatsoever things are honest, consistent, through and through. That's Christian character. That's our life. That's our stand. Worthy of God's service. We believe in order in God's house. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the last 10 verses. Order in God's house. We believe in consistent behavior. And this 
takes you back, well, I'm going to deal with this later, to people who are one thing in church, one thing at home. When you look at a person with a Christian profession, you want to be looking at someone who is through and through the same. You can be humorous, you can be very friendly, you can be engaging, indeed you should be, but always you've got a serious part, a trustworthy part. Your character is through and through the same. You've had teachers you respected, people who were above the rest, and you took them seriously, and they taught, and especially in the churches, earnestly and seriously. You don't expect the person you respect to suddenly turn into a clown, saying preposterous things, behaving like a child, uncontrolled emotional nonsense and so on. And that's what is meant here. Whatsoever things are honest, honorable, noble, through and through, the same, consistent, that's what is meant. Is this too challenging? But that's our life. Be seen as someone friendly, kind, amiable, with humor, but also never giving way to worldliness, cheapskate nonsense, triviality, banality. That's the Christian life, and that's what it's all about here. Whatsoever things are honest. Let's look at whatsoever things are just, righteous, fair. Now, this is about the breadth of life, and it emphasizes the meaning of whatsoever. Whatsoever things are just and righteous and fair. In every department of life, you've got to be righteous and fair. That's our mission policy. As employers, as employed people, we have to be righteous. No shortcuts, no dishonesty, no unreasonableness, no unfairness. Whatsoever things are just. In business, commercial, educational life. In the church, of course, be fair. I hope you're not one of these people who takes all the benefits of teaching and fellowship but never lifts a finger to help. Other people can do all the work for the Lord. Other people can strive in operating the outreach meetings, the weeknight meetings for children, the Sunday school and so on. I enjoy the worship and I enjoy the fellowship and things like that, but I don't lift a finger. Whatsoever things are just. In church, as in employment, as in the family, we have to be fair and just. Or are we inclined to pull our weight in church and not at home? She can do all the work. Not me. That's not for me. Just and fair sharing the burdens, cheering each other up, lifting each other up. This is how we're to be in every department of life. Whatsoever things are just and righteous and fair in personal life, in family life, in my service, in everything I do in employment, is my aim righteousness and fairness in every department of my life. That's the challenge of whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. That's obvious, isn't it? Chaste, clean. I, my mind is to be on those things. I am not to look at things that are unclean. I am not to just sit hopelessly while something reasonable on the television gives way to something which is mixed with the unclean and the unchaste and the lascivious. That's the time to avert and to turn off. I'm not to be so careful at what I look at on the internet at any other time. Whatsoever things are pure, chaste, clean, they're the things I'm to set my mind and my thoughts and my eyes on shunning always sensuality and worldliness, careful in my dress that is never sensual 
even in the hottest weather. All these things, this is Christian character, whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. That's an interesting word. Only here is the Greek word here translated lovely used in the whole of the New Testament. It's an unusual word. Literally, it's a compound word and properly translated, it would be friendly toward. Whatsoever things are friendly toward. Lovely is perfectly reasonable translation because the way the word is used in Greek literature is exactly that. Whatsoever things are pleasing. Whatsoever things are lovely, pleasing. I'm to set my mind on these things. Let me put it this way. Pleasing, wholesome. Now, there are bad things. There are bad things that happen all the time in our lives. And we have to be concerned about them. And they upset us. And they give us disappointment and grief. You can't just say, oh, I'm not going to think of them. I'm going to live a life in which I shut my eyes to anything bad. Well, then you won't be able to put bad things right. Bad things are going on all the time. Coming back to the first part of this message, there are bad things happen in churches. You've got to have a view about them. You've got to be concerned about them. You've got to pray for them. And when, if, it's, if it's down to you, take action on them. So there are bad things. We have to have a ministry of warning have to warn people about things that are against the scripture and things that are going wrong. But we can't let those things consume us. We have to have a balance. And while it's right and responsible to be concerned about the bad things too, we've got to make sure that we also set our mind upon good things. Otherwise, the bad things overwhelm us and begin to embitter and sour and distort our character, our personality, our thinking. And we become negative and hostile people and unhappy people and depressed and miserable people. So here is a duty and it's part of our mission, our personal mission, to set our mind upon things that are amiable and communicate kindness and reflect friendliness and good things. Otherwise, we go hopelessly out of balance. We have to do this. It's so important. Whatsoever things are lovely, put your mind on fellowship. You're very concerned about something which is bad and hostile and unpleasant and difficult. And you're a parent and you've got the great task of knowing when to say no to your children and exclude them from certain company or attractive things. On the other hand, you don't want to deprive them or overdo things. So you've got difficult decisions to make. Your mind has got to be on bad things, but not to the exclusion of good things. Also ration your thinking on those things so that they don't consume you and ruin you. Put your mind on fellowship. Make sure you get fellowship. Come not only on the Lord's Day, but on a week, weeknight meeting. Hear the ministry, fellowship with like-minded people. Share your trials, help others. Fellowship, love communicating, friendly, friendship communicating things. Be helpful, cultivate goodwill. Set your mind on these things. Be a peacemaker. If you know people and they're in difficulty, if the opportunity arises and you're the right person to do it, be a peacemaker and help them. Think about the actions of other people that are commendable and let them warm your heart and pray for them and rejoice in them. Think much upon the good things that God gives you and the wonderful answers to prayer. So whatsoever things are lovely, make sure you give a good portion of your concern and your thinking and your mind to things that are good and wholesome so that you have that honor given to God and you are not spoiled and ruined and embittered by bad things. Whatsoever things are of good report. What a term this is. 
kindly spoken of. Now it overlaps a little with the previous point. Put your mind on all things that are of good report. And I believe the rest of the verse qualifies this last whatsoever. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, if they're praiseworthy things, think of them. Noble sacrificial deeds, people doing good things for the Lord or for others. And you yourself plan good things and helpful things. Give it more time than you have to give to the negative or the difficult things. Give thanks if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Let them encourage you. Make them your own aim. Well, do we do these things? This is the apostle's true Christian character and conduct, our mission statement. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things, not just a few of them, are true, spiritual realities, gospel truth, doctrinal truth, the standards and practices of God to be adopted by Christians and the church. Whatsoever things, the most important things are true, set your mind on them. Make them your chief concern. Whatsoever things are honest, consistent with those truths, hold to them. Whatsoever things are just, righteous and fair, in every department of life. Whatsoever things are pure, chaste, clean, if you've been unchaste, if you've looked at things that are unclean, you've got a tremendous problem as a Christian. You cannot have blessing. You cannot have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. You cannot have his help, his blessing, communion with him. You've got to clean up. You've got to get rid of it. You've got to take steps, determine steps, and cry out to God to cut off whatever is that habit or that practice which brings you into touch with things that are unclean. You cannot live with it. You've got to get rid of secret sins. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, communicate friendship and virtue. Whatsoever things are of good report, well spoken of, praiseworthy, set your mind, give time to them, and the Lord will bless you. And verse 9, which has to be separately treated, will be your blessing. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, they're all the things of verse 8. And the God of peace shall be with you. You'll have that peace of God. What is the peace of God? It is strong assurance that you are his, that he is yours, that he's purchased you, that you belong to him, that you're on the road to heaven, that your prayers are answered, that your ministry of intercession for others is effective. But this eighth verse is vital to you for the formation of character. Pray for help in all these things. They're the basis of every encouragement that you'll ever receive in the Christian life. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, spiritual truth, spiritual service, the spiritual life, most of all, set your mind on it. Be faithful, loyal, defend, proclaim, stand for, be concerned about. Whatsoever things are honest, consistent, never be an inconsistent believer, just and pure, lovely, give space in your mind of good report with virtue and praise. Think on these things, put your mind on these things. Oh, dear friends, let us do it and God will bless us and bless our efforts. Now, in the way I've been speaking, I do not for one moment wish to give the impression that generally speaking, we are a congregation 
who do not put our mind on these things. But we all need firming up from time to time. And it may be that there are some friends in our midst who have slid back a long way. So this is a message for all of us. Whatsoever things, put your mind on those things and pray that God will help you to hold on to them and defend them with all your strength and prove true Christian character.